Good everyone, it's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. It's the video we call Weather for Weather Geeks. We're in the middle of a pretty nice stretch of weather. Now we do have some changes coming our way at the end of the week, but they'll be fairly brief. I think we're back to a pretty nice pattern for a few days by the end of the weekend and early next week. Since the weather is quiet, I thought I'd do a fun little exercise today. I, I've posted this on, uh, on social media before, but I put it in kind of a nice graphical uh, package today showing my ranking of the nicest times of the year based on holidays, life events, the general vibe, and of course uh, weather being the the number one uh, factor that goes into these rankings. You know, it's a close call for me between mid to late spring and mid fall for the best time of the year. That Mother's Day to Father's Day stretch, typically you don't have that midsummer humidity yet. Um, it's you know, you're emerging from the long winter. Everything's emerald green. It's, you know, a day like we had today in the spring where everything's just bright green. Love that time of the year, but also love this time of the year, a mid to late September, early October with the low humidity, the bright sunshine, um, pretty low sun angle and earlier sunsets than we'd like. But of course, with the emerging foliage and football season, all, all the good fall things, it's a nice time of the year. You know, towards the bottom of the list for me, March. Not a big fan of March. Typically, March disappoints. More often than not, March will disappoint. Now, there are exceptions. We had a pretty decent March this year, actually. But a lot of times, we really look forward to getting out of February. We're out of meteorological winter. We're in a meteorological spring. It's going to warm up, and then March fiddles around and snows more than we'd like and is colder than we would like. And not on the list, unranked all of January and February. I associate January and February, of course, with midwinter and snow and everything's just kind of muddy and you're tracking stuff into the house but you know even though i've been out of school for quite some time now you also associate that time of the year with just kind of the 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 dog days of the school year if you will because christmas break is over you still got several months to go until the end of the year the holidays are over so you're into kind of that post-holiday let down period even though my birthday is in February, I am not a big fan of that time of the year. There is a little bit of science behind my rankings, of course. Uh, you know me, I've got to have some science. And, you know, I, I did this exercise uh, last year, and, you know, the numbers haven't really changed that much. When you uh, factor in temperatures and lack of precipitation, so we're looking for highs between 65 and 80, coupled with no rain throughout the day. There are two distinct peaks to nice day season. Uh, one around here tends to be in mid to late May, early June. The other tends to be in September and early October. And we even can pick out a few individual days in which there are the largest number of nice days in our record books across our part of the country. All right, so today, a nice one, 73 this afternoon, and, you know, just a cobalt blue sky. And as I promised yesterday, just not a cloud in the sky for most of the day today. Really sticks out on a sore, like a sore thumb in, in October. 73 today, uh, not only the warmest day in October so far, but the warmest day that we've had in about two weeks since the pattern kind of flipped right as meteorological summer gave way to meteorological fall. It's a pretty quiet pattern across most of the country this evening, our next cold front, so the one that's going to bring us big changes by Friday, is up here. Just some monsoonal moisture in the Four Corners region. Otherwise, there's not a lot to write home about across the lower 48 states. Now, our Thursday is going to be a cloudier day. Some mid and high level clouds will filter through, and it may even look like it wants to rain a couple of times, but it's not going to. It's still going to be a decent day, just not the chamber of commerce kind of a day that we had for today. But here comes our front. Now, by daybreak on Friday, I think there'll be some showers around. Uh, gusty breeze from time to time and as you get out the door to work and school it'll be around 50 as you go home from work and school in the afternoon it'll be around 50 temperatures will hardly move throughout the day as far as precipitation best chance for showers will be right along our front in the morning hours early morning hours on Friday in the afternoon and especially into the evening with uh, some lake effect rain showers trying to get going I can't rule out a couple of raindrops for high school football Friday evening but I don't think it's much rain it's just gonna be very chilly Speaking of chilly, you know, we've got a chilly weekend forecast, particularly Saturday and Saturday night, although uh, we look for increasing amounts of sunshine by Saturday afternoon. YSU is back at home for the first time in about a month on Saturday. It's a 6 o'clock kickoff at the Ice Castle against North Dakota. Uh, the first quarter will still be played in fading daylight, but most of the game played under the lights, and it will be cooling off quickly once the sun goes down. After reaching the mid-50s in the afternoon, temperatures by the end of our game Saturday evening will be heading towards the lower 40s, and it'll probably be a pretty frosty night, Saturday night. If you haven't had much frost in your location just yet this season, probably the best chance of the season so far uh, coming our way as we go into Saturday night and early Sunday. But by mid-morning on Sunday, we're in great shape for the Youngstown 
Peace Race. WFMJ always a proud sponsor of this event. I'll be running in this a Sunday morning. Uh, this starts up above Mill Creek Park, ro- goes through the park, and then ends up in downtown Youngstown. And boy, this is just perfect. I mean, hardly any wind, a lot of sunshine. Yeah, it's going to be a little chilly first thing in the morning, but by 11 o'clock, as a lot of runners are finishing up their 10K, uh, it'll be in the mid 50s, and you know that's pretty good. That's pretty good temperature for runners. Runners usually like it in the upper 40s and 50s. Those are kind of ideal temperatures for uh, maximum effort. Sure beats sweating in August when the dew points are around 70. That is no fun to run in. All right, before we leave you this evening, let's uh, take a look at the longer range. Around the fifth day of the month, we get uh, fresh model data from the European Center. Um, seasonal data that goes out a month at a time, even seasonal, uh, sub-seasonal outlooks that last a few months. And we start paying particular attention to these, of course, as we head towards the winter season. This was released today, and this is the meteorological winter temperature outlook January, uh, December, January, February for North America. And, you know, this set of modeling, we look at it, we take it into account, but it's far from awesome. Sometimes it just has a big whiff, it swings and misses, just like any other modeling. Um, but taken literally, it would suggest pretty cold winter compared to average Alaska down into the northern tier of the U.S. Again, all this compared to average. Warmer than average temperatures probably favored in the southwest, southern tier states even up towards the eastern seaboard. Even though you see some oranges around here, at this lead time, this modeling tends to have a hard time seeing cold. So if you want to take this you know, even a step further, you could probably interpret this model as being a little colder than average all the way down into here, even into this yellow area. That's probably just the model not graphically displaying some cold um, that will likely be there, again, compared to the average. So it's kind of a classic La Nina look, and as you know, if you've been t- paying attention to some of these longer range uh, discussions, we, for the third year in a row, are heading into a La Nina winter. It's a little bit stronger this year than last year and even the year before probably. It may fade pretty quickly and go end up neutral by midwinter, but the winter is going to start with a pretty strong La Nina signal that could have some implications for our winter weather and this is one piece of information that will go into my winter forecast, a lot of other winter forecasts and mine will debut in a little over a month. We're looking at Thursday, November the 17th for the debut of the winter forecast, long version where you're watching this video online and the shorter version always on 21 News, and we'll post that online as well. We're still about five weeks away from that. In the meantime, thank you for watching on this Wednesday night, and I'll have an update on the weekend forecast and more coming up on Thursday's edition of Weather for Weather Geeks.